Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today. This is a, a momentous occasion for, for our school, and um, we're so glad that you're here to join us and share in this moment with us our new beautiful library space that uh, we are truly extremely proud of. I want to thank um, all the folks who helped us get there, but I want to welcome Mayor Barry um, to, uh, to our school. And would like to uh, thank her for, I don't know if you watch her tweets and watch her on TV, but she has such a positive air that she brings to everything that she does, and I, I just think that matters a lot. So thank you for what you're doing. We welcome Dr. Joseph to our school. This is our first visit uh, here, and uh, we're awfully glad to have him on board. We've got a few other folks. Uh, Mary Pierce, our board member. <laughs> Councilman Russ Pooley. Representative John Ray Clemens, who, by the way, if you saw the Nashville scene, is the best dressed. And we are, I'll be meeting with him afterwards to get some tips. So uh, we, count on, we count on him. And um, Aaron Bridges, our fabulous librarian. One of my best hires ever, may I say. Um, and then I want to welcome um, our PTO co-presidents, Marley Albert and Molly Henry. And I think um, those of you who know about our school, our school does not function without our parents. And um, our PTO leadership, um, led by these two, and in each year we have such great leadership and great parental support here. I, I want to mention to you that our Invest campaign just finished up and our parents invested in our school $95,000 in the past couple of weeks. That's huge for us. And we appreciate our parents and so thankful for them. Um, I want to thank um, our faculty because we don't function without our faculty. So all our faculty, if you'll raise your hand back there, faculty and staff. And then the folks um, who helped us along this process. So when we learned we got this um, grant to redo our library last October. We started in the process and we met every two weeks designing it and refining it and um, making it into the, uh, the design that turned into this beautiful space. So I want to thank uh, Steve Clendenin from Street Dixon Architects. Where's Steve? He's not here. So uh, Mr. Dixon, Bayard Dixon from Street Dixon. Rachel Latham. Is Rachel here? And um, uh, Jennifer Fournier from our uh, National Public Library. Where are you, Jennifer? Who helped put together the, all of the decor for us and helped us do that piece of the design. And Allison Barney. Where's Allison? Back over there. Stephanie Hamm, who is um, the director of our MNPS Library Services. Stephanie, back over there. Trisha Bingle. Is Trisha here? Here. Doug Renfro and Adam Kahn. There's Adam. Adam is from the Carter Group. And um, the young man who was the project foreman. And I want to I want to take a second to introduce him. He brought his parents here with him uh, today. And um, he's a very impressive young man. Uh, this young man here. Landon Donkin. So Landon was the project foreman. Landon is a senior at UT. And um, Landon just, stand up Landon, I want everybody to look at you. So Landon was here all summer and um, making sure everything got done and working and uh, he spent several months here nonstop and on the weekends and he just turned 21 a couple of weeks ago. This is a pretty impressive project for a, for a uh, 20 year old young man from from uh, our area and a, a senior at UT. So I know his parents. Where are your parents? Back over there. I know mom and dad, you're really proud of him. We could not do a lot of what we do without uh, Joe Edgens. Mr. Edgens, right there. Joe Edgens worked for Metro Schools for, he's retired from Metro Schools, but he never retires. And um, we're glad to uh, to be able to work with him because he, he made this all come together. And then finally, um, 
I want to introduce you to the person who taught me about the importance of the library. When I came here as a principal, I got my doctorate at, at Vanderbilt, and I thought I knew a lot. But I came here, and this, this parent helped me understand that this space was critical to the functioning of the school. And I didn't quite realize that, but she taught me and schooled me in that. And um, I want you to know that today, our school, because of project-based, I mean, uh, student-based budgeting, we budget more per student for the library and our library books than any other metro school because I believe so deeply in literacy and what we do here to teach kids to read and function and get ready to go to college. So I want to introduce to you Carrie Morgan, who's a former PTO president. But I, I appreciate that, and you know that, and we've talked about that before, but you really changed the way I think about this, what importance this means to our school, so thank you. Finally, um, I want to thank our students because this is all about you. Um, everything we do at this school is for our students, and um, these young people sitting up here, and the young people out there, and the young people that would have been here today uh, if we'd had a school day. The best thing about the library is being such a beautiful new space is what it did to book checkout. Um, since the library opened, we've had a 34% increase over the prior year on the number of books being checked out, and that's huge. So. This uh, is a, um, a testament to the power of your tax dollars being used, and we are grateful to the mayor's office and to the uh, Metro Council for budgeting this money. Thank you so, so much for that. So at this time, we're going to stand, if you don't mind, for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I want to introduce you to uh, a couple of youngsters who are going to lead us in the pledge, Songolo and Genesis. Come on up. Come on. Our flags right over there in the corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, and of a God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I guess I got so excited in uh, doing the introductions. My name is Dr. Gary Hughes. <laughs> and I have to tell you, um, I have the best job in the entire world. This is such a great place, a great community, a great school, a great school district, and I couldn't be happier and prouder to be uh, the leader of the school. I also want to introduce to you my two assistant principals, Seth Swihart and Miss Robin Allen. And I don't function without them, so I, I couldn't do what I do without them. But anyway, welcome. Uh, we're so glad you're here. I hope when you leave, you'll go out to our pumpkin patch and, and um, pick out a pumpkin and fruits and vegetables and everything else because it benefits everything we do here at the school. So at this time, uh, Mr. Jalen Macon. My name is Jalen Macon, and I'm in eighth grade, and this is my first year here at uh, J.T. Moore. Um, I would like to thank the PTO for paying for our our book, and without them paying for our book, then we would have to like come to the Limitless Library to be able to get our books for all the students. Dr. Son, Dr. Son Joseph is the newly hired director of Metro National Public Schools. He has fought for excellence and equity for the nation's 46th largest district. He has fought for excellence and equity for every student he has served over a 20-year career as a principal, teacher, district administrator, su deputy superintendent, and superintendent. He has won numerous awards for his work and service and is a published author and research with articles in top peering review journals of education on topics like strategic planning and principal development. Dr. Joseph holds a bachelor's degree from Lincoln University, a, a master's degree from John Hopkins University, and a doctorate from the, the George Washington University. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you Dr. Sean Joseph. He did a great job. He did a great job. Well, good morning, everybody. 
It is it is so exciting to come into such a beautiful facilities uh, for for you know for students to to be able to learn. I can tell you, whenever I always tell people, whenever I go into a school, the first place I want to go is to the library. I mean, it's just because I think it it sends the message uh, to let us know how serious we are about educating uh, children and and whether we're going to really give kids an invitation, and access, and opportunities uh, to excellence. Because so many children, you know, the, the, the world, they're limited by like the, that little circle of, you know, that three-mile radius from which they, they live. Uh, but when they walk into a library, uh, they can see and live the world. Uh, so, so I just think it's always critical when, when, I, when I see a library that doesn't look as beautiful as this. You know, I always ask, what, what can we do? Uh, to make things right. And, and I was extremely excited to see you with uh, the Jonathan Livingston Seagull book. I know I'm supposed to be coming back and uh, working with a group of students, so I'm, I'm looking forward, yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you and, and the other students about that. You know, I think years ago I, I shared, I read Jonathan Livingston Seagull uh, as a book, and it was, a uh, you know, seagulls aren't supposed to fly, you know, very well, and, and Jonathan, you know, was determined to not only you know, fly better than the typical seagull, but he wanted to be the best bird in the air, right? And, and that's what we have to teach our children, that, that the goal isn't just to be good. It's about being the best in, in what you want to do and, and, and defy any obstacles that may be placed in front of you, that if you believe it and if you work hard, you can, you can do great things. So, you know, being here uh, is exciting uh, this morning because as a district, you know, we're talking about the work that we have to do with literacy. The Board of Education, and we have uh, Mary Pierce here, who has been an extreme advocate on, you know, what are we doing to make sure uh, we're pushing all children, and, and we're really ensuring kind of excellent opportunities in all in all buildings. And so, you know, being here in this beautiful library, you know, symbolic of of the work that we know we need to do with literacy uh, in this district. So, and I'm extremely excited to. Uh, have this partnership with the uh, limit, limit to, Limitless Libraries uh, program uh, in this district uh, because we're able to increase the access uh, to high quality books uh, for all you know, children in this district. And I really thank the mayor and the council for all that you have done to fund these type of opportunities. And I'm extremely uh, appreciative uh, to Mr. Oliver for uh, the commitment that you have with the public libraries. I mean, it's rare in the country that you have uh, this type of collaboration happening where the libraries come together with the schools to ensure, you know, all kids have access to high quality uh, materials. And, and, and Nashville is a special place uh, with that, that opportunity. So, you know, we've, we've got to maximize this. But this place is beautiful. I mean, it's the type of environment that we want all kids to be in. Uh, so, so I hope the funds continue and we can, we can continue to expand, you know, these opportunities because it matters. It matters, and, and what a great school, and you, know, you have an extraordinary principal in Dr. Hughes. Uh, his, his commitment to the school is evident, and you know, I truly appreciate the fact that he keeps kids first. Uh, you know, I mean, there, there are lots of people that, that do this work for lots of reasons, uh, but we've always got to be reminded, and Dr. Hughes reminded us today, that this work is about uh, these wonderful children that sit in front of us. You all did an excellent job. Uh, and I know you're going to do great things because you're in a wonderful school. So, you know, I thank you all for being here, taking the time out of your busy days uh, to be here and celebrate with us this, this beautiful uh, facilities. Uh, so at this point, I will uh, turn the mic over to am I turn it? Peyton. to Peyton. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Peyton Ellison. And Ken Oliver is the director of Nash Nashville Public Libraries, which operates 21 locations across Davidson County. Under his leadership, the library has expanded or la and launched several key programs to provide proven education resources in Nashville. One of the initiatives is Limitless Library, a partnership between Nashville Public Library, a metro and Metro Nashville Public Schools. Through Limitless Libraries, Metro students can access the library's books and other resources at their schools. Limitless Libraries also supports Metro School Libraries, which collection, development, and school libraries renovations. Uh, without Limitless Libraries, our teachers would have to pay for the books, and we probably wouldn't have enough books to 
have in the whole class. So, ladies and gentlemen, Kent Oliver. Thank you for that introduction. And uh, thank you guys for being here today. I think, isn't there a fall break or something going on? Uh, anyway, but thank you for being here and thank all of you for being here today. You know, as I look around this room, I see a lot of the trademarks that we put in our, uh, in our collaborations on, the, on the, the, school, the school libraries and the limitless libraries. One of those is right behind me. I think there are actually uh, two garage doors in this library. Um, but we also have group study spaces. We have multimedia-based learning spaces in this space, project-based learning in science, technology, engineering, art, math, and reading, of course, and reading for the fun of it, which is so important to all of us. You know, we've already recognized some of the players who, uh, who uh, work to make this space happen. And one of the things that I like about Limitless Libraries so much is just the fact that it is a true collaboration. It is not the libraries coming in or the public library coming in and saying this is what we need to do here. It's working with the school libraries and the public libraries, the construction teams, all the uh, contractors involved to really make a successful space. Obviously, I do believe in America's public libraries. I think they're critical. They're centers for information and reading, a place where people of all backgrounds visit to get the information they need to research, and yes, just to read for fun. And libraries are also about the First Amendment by providing free, unfettered access to information and ideas Libraries allow us to exercise our rights, indeed your rights, as thinkers and communicators. And in this space, we are helping our children become those type of thinkers and communicators as well. As director of the Nashville Public Library, I am very proud of the program that we've referred to a number of times here today, Limitless Libraries. And really, through Limitless Libraries, Metro students, teachers, and school librarians have access to your public library's resources right here at the school campus. Last year, drum roll please, Limitless Libraries delivered more than 131,000 books and resources to Metro schools. Think about that. We have infused more than $1 million into Metro school library collections, and as we see here today, Limitless Libraries also invest in the actual physical space of our public schools. We've already mentioned the fact that J.T. Moore's circulation and usage of the library has gone up 32% already this year. That's actually inc incredible. Congratulations. I'm told that an average of 50 students storm in and out of this space every day. And I can picture them balancing books and backpacks on those square cushions back there. And I hope they consider the school library the most important and best spot in the school. With Limitless Libraries, we are indeed doing something very right here in Nashville. And that would not be possible without the leadership of our mayor and our school superintendent. But of course, Limitless Libraries would also not be what it is today without committed educators, librarians, and community supporters. And I do want to recognize the families and the students and the PTOs. There are such important factors in making school libraries really work in their community. And also the civic-minded organizations that support reading and education through the National Public Library Foundation. As an example, since 2012, Dollar General Literacy Foundation has contributed $1.75 million, that's $1.75 million, to support limitless libraries and other national public library programs. And I believe uh, Lindsay Sublett with the foundation is here. Lindsay, would you get up? Let's get 
it's really that kind of a support that can help us really take some of these programs to the next level. I'd, I'd like to conclude by saying that it's a privilege and always a lot of fun to help celebrate reading and education and especially to be here with you today. And thanks for being part of Limitless Libraries. how many of you like the new concept but for me I do really like the open concept because last year we didn't really have that big of a library but I say that now they've made it much more bigger and there's more space for us students to move around I also like the bright colors and it also brights up it brightens up the room a lot more than the colors did last year and the years before that but I want to go on and get into my speech but right now <laughs> But my name is Jeffrey Simmons, and I would like to introduce Mayor Megan Berry. She is serving her first term as the seventh mayor of Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County, following an historic election in which she became the first Metro Council member and first woman to be elected mayor. Berry's focus as mayor is on improving the educational outcomes at our public schools, engaging regional and state partners to develop a unified vision and plan for transportation, creating more affordable housing options for residents of all backgrounds, and continuing to grow our economy while ensuring all parts of Davidson County share in the prosperity. In building her administration, Barry has put a sharp focus on ensuring that the mayor's office is reflective of the city that it serves. To that end, Barry has put together the most diverse team in history of Metro Nashville, uh, in the history of Metro Nashville, with the majority female staff and African Americans, Latinos, and LGBT Nashvillians in key leadership positions throughout the administration. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Mayor Megan Berry. Jeffrey, thank you. And thank you to all the students who are up here today to, to be here, because I do know that you're on fall break. And, uh, and I also want to say thank you to everybody who's joining us. Dr. Hughes, beautiful. This is a, an amazing place. And I think, you know, it's really interesting. I, I often think that children absolutely know how the adults in their lives feel about them when they walk into a space. And you can tell that the children who get to walk into this space know that the adults in their lives care deeply about them and their learning opportunities. How many of you all are readers? Awesome. It starts with reading. Reading opens those doors for you, opens those doors to history, entertainment, sports, hit, and all those things that we want our, our children to have. And so when we have this opportunity to look around this room and go, not only do we have Metro Libraries with Kent here, not only do we have our public schools with Dr. Joseph here, not only do we have our PTO parents here, but all the other parents and educators and kids and not-for-profit, this is a great example especially when electeds also pop in, that we can all come together and actually create these places in our community. Because the physical space is just one aspect of this. The rest of this comes with the people who populate this room and the books that we also get to have. And having a limitless library opportunity for our kids to have any book they want at their fingertips is historic. And when we talk about that partnership, it is very unique in the United States. We are a model for other places to do that. And to that end, as a community, we step up and read. And this year, we are reading a great book. It is called March by John Lewis. How many of you all know who John Lewis is? Well, by the time we read this book, you guys are going to know who John Lewis is. John Lewis wrote this book, and it, it may even be more interesting because it's got a lot of pictures. John Lewis was incredible. He came to our community, and he's going to be back. He's going to be back as we read this book called March across our community. He was a man, is a man, of relentless courage, dignity, and belief. And he is going to educate us on the civil rights movement here in Nashville. And this book is especially historic because what John Lewis used to say, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? 
And that, I think, is the mantra for all of us right now, whether we're talking about housing, transportation, education, economic growth, or quality of life. Because at the end of the day, we are the ones responsible for making sure that all of those things happen. So this book is a great starting point for that conversation. So I'm going to invite all of you for when John Lewis comes back to go with me to see him. How's that? You guys want to do that? So he'll be back. He's going to give a lecture on Saturday morning, November 19th. I hope all of you will put that in your book and make time for that. But today, as we sign this book, I'm going to give this to you all. This is going to be your book for this library, so you guys can check this out. And, uh, and then what we can do as well is if it, this book's not available, pick up another book, celebrate another book, read another book, and another book, and another book. And through this library and this space, you can do that. So Dr. Hughes, thank you so much for this. This is amazing. There's no ribbon that we get to cut today, I've been told. I, I have big scissors in my car if you want me to go out and get some. <laughs> This, so this is a virtual ribbon cutting. So I'm not sure what that looks like, but visually, maybe we can take some pictures. Can we take some pictures with these guys? Okay. I'm going to sign this. And who's going to check it out first? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you'll stay and have some refreshments and just mingle around and um, look at our beautiful space and um, talk to our beautiful kids and our teachers. And uh, again, we thank you for coming out today and uh, taking a, a moment out of your busy schedules to be part of the J.T. Moore Matador family. Thanks for being here.